The White House isn't the only impressive mansion in Washington, D.C. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the Lars Anderson House in D.C.'s DuPont Circle. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. In 1866, Lars Anderson was born to a well-established family. His ancestors had fought in the American Revolutionary War, putting the family on track to brush shoulders with some of the nation's leading politicians. His father had roomed with Robert Todd Lincoln, the son of Abraham Lincoln, while he was attending Harvard. This connection proved to be crucial for Lars's career, as his father was able to network to land Lars's first job in politics, leading to a lifelong career as a diplomat. Between generational wealth, gifts from foreign nations, and the money he earned while appointed to various positions, Lars became incredibly wealthy. In 1902, he hired architects Arthur Little and Herbert Brown to design for him a stately Beaux-Arts-style mansion in Washington, D.C.'s DuPont Circle. Constructed from limestone, the house rose three stories below a hipped roof. From the sidewalk, we can see how the entrance was configured, with two gates breaking away from each wing of the house with a large wall running between them. Passing under the stone and wrought iron gate, you would begin approaching the rounded porte cochere, supported by fluted columns. To give you a sense of the colossal scale, in this photo we can see the heads of full-grown men barely rising above the bases of the columns. The interior of the home boasted massive rooms, including the Great Hall, where a staircase floated above parquet floors along wood-paneled walls. The drawing room continued, with a double-height ceiling decorated in layers of ornate millwork above a neatly organized grid of gilded wall panels. In the dining room, we can imagine foreign dignitaries walking across the freshly polished, inlaid marble floors, taking a seat at the table to discuss world affairs. Every corner of the mansion was built to impress, with long galleries strung with tapestries and every surface boasting antiques and statues from around the world. Though some spaces were designed to be more cozy, such as the Winter Garden, with trellis run up the walls to offer a more secluded and natural escape from the exceeding elegance found in the rest of the house. Lars and his wife Isabel enjoyed living in the house for several decades, entertaining some of the world's most influential leaders in their gilded halls. They never had any children, so when Lars passed away in 1937, Isabel honored Lars's roots by donating the mansion, along with its furnishings, to the Society of Cincinnati, a fraternal organization made up of the descendants of the military officers who led the United States to freedom from Great Britain. In present day, the Lars Anderson House is open to the public for tours, where guests can learn more about the American Revolution through special exhibits. If you have ever visited, I would love to hear about your experience down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to take a moment to say a very special thank you to our This House supporters, whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen and show the world your support for the production of these videos, join our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.